All right, guys, let's go visit Flathead Ron's garage up in Sacramento. All right, everybody, welcome back to the old iron shop. Well, this is a 1929 South Bend Model A mm -hmm. that I acquired at an estate sale in El Cerrito, California. Um, the items I got at the estate sale were possessions of a gentleman who was, he was a master machinist in the service mm -hmm. and Norbert was his name and he went on I believe after his career as a machinist in the service he went on to be a machinist or an instructor at UC Berkeley oh okay at UC Berkeley and I don't know if that's where this came from I wonder if he worked at the the Berkeley lab well actually the mill came from the same place oh really yeah the, that brown and sharp model zero came from the same oh. place and all these were in a basement. When I first went in there, everything was covered with rust. You know how the Bay Area is. Yeah, all salty? Salt, yeah, a little <laughs> bit salty. And you could see because on the underneath of the dials, they were still pretty clean. And uh -huh. on the top of everything was just a fine coat of rust. Yeah, yeah. But um, I didn't run the I'd run it, the saddle back and forth or anything because it had quite a bit of garbage on it. Yeah, so. that, that's just for you guys out there. That's a good idea. If you come up with a piece of machinery that's really rusty, don't go grinding everything up by dragging it back and forth a bunch oh, no. of times. See if it'll move, you know, if you can get it to move a little bit, that's good, but uh, don't run it up and down the bed a few times because you're just Those rough tear lakes. tearing up stuff. When I first got over there, it was going to be one price for the lathe, and I'm standing right about in this position in front of the original table that the lathe was on, mm -hmm. and she says, well, this is our last week to have the sale here. If you want everything in the entire basement, I'll give it to you for this amount. So I turned around and there's that brown and sharp model zero. Of course, it didn't look like it does now. It didn't have the Bridgeport head on it. No. <laughs> no vice, no overarm up on the top because that was upstairs in the garage. Uh-huh. And it was, the brown and sharp was sitting there looking so pitiful. It was all full of rust. I couldn't even tell what it was. Mm-hmm. Really, I just, there was no drive on it. All there was was the spindle and the head and the casting for the stand. And when they moved it in the room, I guess somebody dropped it on one side and bent the lead screw Ooh, on this side here. And oh, this here, you mean? Yeah, and when my friend and I were moving it out, we couldn't move the table back and forth. And when we were taking it down the steps to go out of the place it was into, so then we can go back up, we bent the other side of the lead. Screw. Oh, geez. <laughs> so I had to take that out. I put the screw in my lathe. That was the first project I did in it before I thought of recording anything. Yeah. And I got that thing within three thousandths end to end. It's not too bad. So. It's certainly a lot better than it was. At least yeah, you so can you can use it now, right? The table yeah. wouldn't move back and forth. I've got the the tool tray that's supposed to be on there. Okay. So that'll be that'll be one more step closer to your machine being all yeah, all these whole colors, everything everything came with it. Yeah, that's nice. For mine, I got to find a, uh, call it a slabbing mill. It, it kind of looks like these, but it's it's long. It's a big, long cylindrical type cutter. Oh, I, th I think I've seen a couple on eBay. Uh, yeah, they, they weren't that big, but they always they always go for real premium, it seems. But uh, uh, yeah. I'll wait around. I'll find one. This is a 1940, and it's uh, serial number 1131, and I got it from the gentleman. Apparently, he bought it. 40 years ago when it was sitting in the same shop for 40 years and I have the whole journey leaving home going down there and getting it bringing it back and all the restoration or refurbishing I won't call yeah. it a restoration because I didn't actually do any work to it except for clean it and paint it. Mm -hmm. um, I did a little welding on on these right here I had to fabricate a new piece yeah of cards, but, yeah I remember seeing that video um, ran it side to side and I thought it was off half a thou until a gentleman brought to my attention I had a tenth indicator so it's <laughs> off five tenths. Oh, 
from one end to the other end, and yeah. that's an 18 inch chuck. And it hasn't been ground. All I did was clean it up and yeah. stone it just to get off any burrs in between the chuck and the bed. And, and it's yeah. over the top. I can see it. Looks like it was uh, scraped. Looks like this. So yeah, the surface has all been hand scraped. This one, it's worn off of a little bit, but and even underneath this looks here, like it's meant to hold a, a larger chuck, maybe. It is. It's a 1024. This will hold a 24 inch chuck. Holy cow! That's <laughs> that's. I think that's what the book of uh, the brochure says over there. It'll hold a 24 inch chuck. Wow. So that's cheap. Know, it, it doesn't have that big <laughs> of a stroke because yeah. If you run it all the way to this one, you run it back and forth there a couple times, and it's real easy. Yeah. But, I think the 18 inch chuck here is just perfect for it. Yeah. Hmm. And I have this cranked all the way in. You know, I have all these machines kind of close. Yeah. But I figure for this machine here, I only need this much area. Yeah. And then I could turn over with the saddle run all the way in it. I got more than enough room for the mill and more than enough room for the light. So I don't think I can run through it once. Uh, it's yeah. Kind of you get the nice thing about the mill is got a got an auto stop, so you can, right, can turn it on, it. turn around, and do whatever. Work on the lathe or set up something or whatever. Uh, I know, like these guys that run like CNC equipment, sometimes they're running four or five machines. Yeah, I did have a wheel for it. I gave it the ring test. I made sure I put it away so I wouldn't break it <laughs> because this has three inch arbor and it can get a little pricey. Yeah, you know, you might talk to Keith Rucker. I don't know if he's out there listening, but. Um, he had a whole bunch of them. He was, uh, I think, going to trade off or something like that. But he had picked up a large lot of them. All right, Ron, what, what is it we've got over here? Well, we have a turret for what I believe is for an 8-inch lathe. My south bend is 9, so I really can't use it on my south bend. And a gentleman I was talking to told me it was possibly a Warner Swazi. And it's got the flat mount on the bottom. Since it was for an 8 and I had a 9, I was thinking of making a plate for it so I could adapt it to my south bend. But I don't really think that I would ever be using a turret, mm -hmm. especially on what I'm going to be doing because it's going to be mostly hobby stuff. Yeah. So if it wants to jump in your truck and take a ride home, you're I'm, I'm feeling like I got a pretty magnetic personality. Ah, I pulled all these out, freed everything up, a couple of the little barrel, um, I don't know, the locks so with the taper in there. Mm -hmm. A couple of them had a little edge on it that was rolled over and they wouldn't slide, so I just took a file and moved it off of mm -hmm. it. But it works perfectly. It advances to each station on the turret the way it's supposed to. And it's got a cool little mic stop on the back here. Yeah, that's neat. I, I've never really used one of these, but I don't know that I've ever seen one that has a micrometer, kind of an adjustment like that on there. I've seen them with... I don't know what the proper terminology is, but with different bolts on it, so I can Usually they'll have like different lengths for for however much retraction. Uh, Correct. I, I suppose I'm going to have to go talk to Randy Richards about that because he's he's been using one of these quite a lot here. I think he's got two of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we'll have to get, a, get an education on a new tool now, I guess. So if you didn't have the exact length this fits, bigger than an 8 inch, I'm sure you can make it adapt. Yeah, my, my atlas is a 12 inch, so, you know, we could certainly bring that up, okay. however, however many inches that needs to be. Definitely. Uh, it shouldn't be too big of a deal to do. Well, I know a guy's got a surface grinder. If you need to yeah, yeah. Make it flat. I, I probably will. <laughs> that's actually a good point. <laughs> yeah, that's all. It all seems like it's really nice and tight and everything, too. Oh, yeah, there's, there's no words on the inside. Got a little oil hole on the top there. Yeah. <laughs> it's just been sitting in the box down there, and when we were talking earlier, I thought I'd fly it out. Because she probably won't see the light of day with me for a long, long time. Yeah. Well, like I said, I, I know guys that do a lot of restorations of old tractors, and they're always, you know, uh, or I suppose a lot of guys just go to the hardware store and buy modern bolts, but the old style bolts are different. Yes. So with this, you can buy a hex rod and machine your bolt and make it look just like the originals, and that, that goes a long way. If you're trying to do a restoration, that really goes a long way to making yeah, it look it like a restoration. good restoration, you know? That's right. I think it'll be a good addition Yeah, I think I can make some use of this. And you know, certainly, this will make good content for all the people out there that like watching these videos. So everything works out as supposed to. 
Yeah. Yep, yep. And here I was thinking I would never be able to find one of these things. <laughs> this one you at least expect. Yep. You never can tell what falls on you. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that trip up to Flathead Ron's Garage. Please subscribe to his channel. Uh, he's got some pretty cool machines, and he's doing a really nice job of fixing them up, and he's way faster at it than I am. Uh, anyway, make sure to give him some views. He's got some pretty interesting stuff going on over there.